Right, let's get into this. Rise of Skywalker review, yeah? I've got, the, I've got the Darth Vader Cup right here, yeah? got the Darth Vader Cup. Spoilers for Empire Strikes Back. It's already effed up on the cup, yeah? Because you know, you know what's going to happen anyway. This flipping film, yeah? Rise of Skywalker. Let's talk about it. So I went to see it the other day. I heard, like, um, bad reviews from it from other people on YouTube and whatnot. But I thought, you know what? I, I, I didn't go to see um, Last Jedi in the cinema. I, I got that on DVD. And... Um, Ended up uh, not really liking that much. Yeah. But anyway, I saw another review on that actually from someone else. And that did like make me appreciate that film a bit more. So I can't remember the guy's YouTube channel, but it, it was pretty good. Um, what he said about it that made me appreciate it a bit more. But I, I still didn't really like the choices they took because I remember the old books. I read the old books in it, the Timothy Zahn books about... Um, Luke and Leia and Han and, and, and Lando and, and the New Republic and I liked the way the story went there so I didn't really like how they done it in the Disney um, sequels yeah but this Rise of Skywalker one I think that you know they had a difficult task of um, you know because like Ryan Johnson had killed off the uh, the villain Snoke in the second one so then they had to bring the Emperor, Emperor back Oh yeah, spoilers, it's a spoiler review, yeah, so yeah. Anyway, they had to bring the Emperor back. Is someone at my door? What the fuck is going on? Anyway, yeah, they had to bring the Empire Emperor back, yeah, which, in all, you know, like, it was, it's alright, but he, he's a bit, I think he's played too, too hammy now, it's gone too corny now, like the way it's all played and everything, it's like too predictable and stuff. And then, um, Ray, I thought she did pretty well this time, you know, like, um, I didn't really have a problem with her acting. A lot of people say she's she's a bad actress and whatnot, but I thought she'd done all right. Like when she accidentally blew up Chewie, she the way she screamed there, I thought was pretty convincing. She actually, you thought she actually cared about him, so she, you know, I thought she did pretty well um, with Princess Leia and that. That was a bit weird because you could see, obviously, you know that she's dead, and you know that they put her in there because every time the camera's on her, it's on the same angle, and she's doing the same pose. And looking up at the same place. So it, done, it did look a bit weird. And you knew it wasn't really meant to be there. But, you know, what do you want, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to do that or do you not want them to do that? It's a bit weird. It's a bit of a mad one, isn't it? Really, it's a bit of a mad one. But, you know, RIP Carrie Fisher. Um, the Han Solo thing when he came back. I thought that, that was pretty good. That's one of the, the strongest scenes in the film for Kylo Ren's character arc. You know, like Han Solo coming back and him um, them saying a the dialogue that kind of mirrored the Force Awakens dialogue. But, um, yo, I'm still in this fucking Star Wars review right now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. The Han Solo, Kylo Ren scene. I thought that was all right. Do you want to come and do this Star Wars review with me? Talk about what you thought about the film. Alright, cool. Anyway, yeah. Um, then, what else is alright? I thought Poe and Finn. Poe, I think they could have delved a bit more into his character. Like, you saw that Zori Bliss woman. Didn't get to see her face. It was a bit of a shame. I thought they, they you know, they could have gone a bit deeper. Maybe the film could have been a bit longer. Yeah, so you've gone a bit deeper into his character. You only got snippets of who they were before. I ain't read the comics or anything or any of these other books about this new sequel trilogy. So I don't know about that stuff. So that might have been a bit nice. Um, Finn, I think, yeah, he, his character was a bit better this time than in Last Jedi, where I thought he was, um, I don't know, I think he could have been the strongest character in this whole trilogy, you know, because he was an ex-stormtrooper, became good, they could have really looked into his whole, like, moral objection to what the First Order was doing, and all that stuff, and I think that's a bit of, they, they wasted that bit. I think it was a bit of a wasted opportunity there. I liked how he met that other stormtrooper, ex-stormtrooper and that on the planet. And they, they shared their experience and whatnot. Um, that was pretty good. And then, um, what do you want? You want a weed? Yeah, Rizzler, there you go. Um, uh, what the fuck am I talking about now? Um, yeah, I thought she was meant to be Lando's daughter though. That's what I read. Somewhere about the um, the plot leaks and that. Um, about Lando's daughter. I thought she was going to be that. So I was expecting that to happen. And that's why he 
had been on that planet not doing anything for 30 years, yeah? This is the other problem I have with this, like, okay, you bump into him now, where the f*** was he in all that other time? Where the hell was he? Like, where was Wedge? Where, like, Wedge comes at the end in the, when they're going to fight everyone. Um, do you know what I mean? They, they made Han Solo, he just turned into a waste man after after Kylo Ren went nuts and he just gone and flipping, become a smuggler again. Leia's the only one who was consistent in what you thought she was going to do. Luke turned into a bitter old hermit after his thing effed up and I know people got pissed off with that but if you look at the George Lucas um leaked uh, ideas or whatever they said Luke was meant to be depressed as well and the new person getting out of depression so you know that you might not like where they decided to take the character I didn't like it in in Last Jedi either but Maybe that's a lesson, isn't it? Maybe you've got to think, okay, that this this film is for young kids, really. You know, it's for teenagers and young kids, and it's teaching them the lesson that life doesn't always work out, has meant to work out, and often it just turns to shit. Like Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So maybe that's what the lesson they're trying to teach these kids is. I don't, I don't know. But the film, I thought, yeah, people saying it was too fast-paced and that. I didn't really have a problem. When I was watching it, I just thought, yeah... I turned my brain off, I went in there, I, th I thought, yeah, it's going to be rubbish, so I had low expectations, went in there, and I quite enjoyed it when I was there, because I didn't expect anything, and I just, you know, just turned my brain off, that's what you're meant to do in these popcorn movies, that's why they're called popcorn movies, you're not meant to, they're not meant to be Shakespeare, they're not meant to be Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, any of that war and peace, whatever, like, do you know what I mean, they're not meant to be that, so to the people complaining about that, Say that these films are dumb and they got plot holes. Yeah, they have. There's, there's plot holes all over the place. There's there's all this stuff that is just like, you know, what the hell was Lando doing? There's no explanation about why he just decided to sit in this place in a desert for 30 years or whatever. There's, there's no explanation to that. So, yeah, you're not really meant to think when you're watching these films. You're just meant to sit there and just take it in and then, and, and then go out and not think about it that much. Like... Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe like now, all the people complaining about now, maybe you have actually grown up now and you're ready for deeper fiction Yeah, that is going to enrich you more. So I would recommend, anyone who doesn't like these films and is pissed off about it and thinks they're crap, I would recommend reading War and Peace, yeah? Maybe reading Shakespeare, get into Shakespeare, um, get to Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, um, all these guys who are coming with some deep stuff you want that deepness and you're not getting it from star wars you're not getting it no more that's because you grew up yeah so now it's time to get into other shit yeah so i started reading war and peace and i was like yo this this book is deep yeah my dad told me this book's serious yeah he, he lent me his copy of it and i started reading it and i was like yeah this book is deep it's better than these hollywood films so this is what it's telling me your these hollywood films that have a u rating or these, these, you know, 12 rating, or whatever the hell it is, that's, do you know what I'm saying, it's, it's for, for young people, it's not for us anymore, we're old now, yeah, so now we've got to get into shit, that is going to enrich our brains, this stuff ain't going to do it anymore, because we pick all our fucking plot holes out, and we say, oh, this is crap, this character motivation is crap, this character art just got destroyed for no reason, this da 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 all wasted opportunities, yeah, because it's not meant for us anymore, We've grown up now. It's time to read other shit. Do you know what I'm saying? So pick up War and Peace, all that. That's my recommendation to all you people getting pissed off. The music, I thought, was, yeah, it was cool. It's all, you know what I mean? It's all it's all visually impressive and everything, but obviously it's not amazingly deep or nothing. And it's not going to, you know, simple shit, man. It's, it's popcorn movie. That's what it is. That's what I want to see. That's how I enjoyed it as. I ate my popcorn. I drank my Coca-Cola and I watched it and I thought, yeah, that was all right. Came out. It was, it was an alright way to pass two hours. So I'd say to if you're going to go and watch this film and not really give a fuck and, and have a good time or whatever, just go watch it for that. Don't expect to be culturally enriched. Don't expect to be philosophically enriched that much. Do you know what I'm saying? Your brain has got past that now. Read War and Peace. That's what I say. Read War and Peace, yeah? <laughs>